The gutted hive belched vast towers of soiled black smoke into the pallid grey heavens, and the ruinous heat of its destruction baked the air for miles around. Our power armor was mottled with ash, the proud luster of the chapter colors bleached and dulled. The company relic banner was only a burnt tatter of cloth now, and the machine spirit of our great land raider Paladin's honor buzzed and squealed as it died slowly. The sound a tinny echo from within the tank's bored and blasted hull. The squad regrouped on a patch of clear ground amid the panorama of corpses to contemplate our victory. Three brothers were dead, and a fourth was dying. Marcus had never made it out of the Land Raider. The same missile strike that had mortally wounded the noble vehicle had blasted him with shock and shrapnel, reducing the decorated veteran to a gory wreck. Atlas had been liquefied inside his suit by a direct melter hit. The wry, old warrior had ended his service spurting from the joints of his own armor as a reeking soup. Iskander had been mobbed by turncoat guardsmen, who weighted his mighty limbs with swarming bodies until he was dragged down by excruciating inches to the sodden ground, to be clubbed and knifed to an undignified end. But the captain, he had suffered the worst fate of all, made all the worse for lacking the catharsis of death. His final action had been, on its face, heroic. In a just universe, his end should have been the triumphant apotheosis of the martyr, but the chapter annals could never record it. He had lunged between a clutch of shell-shocked and cowering planetary defense force troopers and the first volley of an enemy ambush that had rushed them out of dust-throttled gullies. His magnificent frame, like the model of some demigod of celebrated antiquity rendered into marble, had stood for one glorious instant defying the baying darkness of madness and evil. Silhouetted against the gaudy glow of the energy beam he had just interrupted with his body to protect the Imperial subjects who cringed and cried out shrill prayers behind him. He lay where he fell, a short distance from the wreck of Paladin's honor, untended by apothecaries. No other bodies were near him. I did not look at him. None of us did. I clasped my bolter more like a talisman than a weapon of war now, its familiar heft the near unconscious ritual of checking and rechecking the hallowed mechanisms was a comfort, a distraction from a shame so acute that it scraped against the bloody edge of madness. I clutched it tightly, and pretended not to notice that the hands that held it were imperceptibly trembling within their gauntlets. At the same time, I let my more than human senses range out in search of stimuli, focusing on a thousand sounds, smells, and sensations. The tick of metal in the Land Raider's cooling hull, the rancid fear odor of the surviving PDF, the spoiled milk stink of the dead traitors, my own battle brother cooked blood and shredded entrails, anything but the soiled patch of ground where my captain lay. Brother Castor tugged off his helm with a snarl of disgust and let it thump into the grey dust at his feet, a breach of protocol that should have earned him a penance. But for the first time in my service, I could not bring myself to reprimand him for it. The eyes that glared at me out of his patrician face were as fierce as ever, but haunted. A triumph for the chapter, and a triumph for the third, he growled. What songs do you think they will sing of us, Brother Sergeant? I said nothing. I did not remove my helmet to match his stare. I could not bring myself to. The third company had bled itself dry on the ravaged soil of this planet for almost a year. The rebellion that had become a full-blown chaos incursion had smashed itself in orgiastic hatred against our ranks. Whenever we had thought the enemy finally broken, his malice finally spent, a new host of insurrectionaries had appeared in the midst of the loyal. A fresh army of renegades had translated out of the supposedly placid warp. A new cultic lunacy had erupted in sectors our analysts had deemed secure. And the bleeding had begun again. 
The traitors had used guerrilla tactics, suicide charges, mass occultism that had stricken the toiling masses of the hives we were trying to defend with mutation and murder. Industrial productivity had slackened, then fallen away altogether. The planetary governor had moved his court off world, and the PDF had become a rabble and a liability around the time they started recruiting adolescent children to recoup their staggering losses. The planetary economy had collapsed under the strain of constant, colossal warfare. Even if every servant of the archenemy in system dropped dead at once tomorrow, all this world had to look forward to now was decades of civil conflict as factions fought to claim governance over the ruins. But we had won. The third and fourth companies had suffered 80% fatalities and lost most of the Fallen's precious gene seed amongst the ferocity of the fighting, ensuring our chapter would be impaired for generations. The planet's capital hive was a burning ossuary at our backs, and the arch enemy was surely laughing in the warp. But in the most bitterly technical sense of the word possible, we had won. The foe was finally reduced to frenzied remnants, with no hope of strategic victory and no goal beyond murdering a few more of us out of spite. The chapter stood victorious. Apothecary Quintus looked up from the bloody wreckage of Brother Marcus and slowly shook his head. Gene Seed. Irretrievable, he said in a low, bitter voice. The shrapnel was coated with some warp made toxin I cannot identify. The genetic material is contaminated. Another warrior lineage ended, said Castor. But at least his death was worth it. Was it not, Sergeant? He gestured at the towering funeral pyre that three days earlier had been the last unravaged major hive on the planet. Can you not hear the grateful cheers of the citizenry, his sacrifice redeemed? Castor, please, I said wearily. Be silent. I'm surprised you can even hear me, brother over the noisy gratitude of the Emperor's loyal subjects. Castor gestured dismissively at the PDF wretches who tottered, dazed and smoke-stained amongst the carnage. Shall we not receive triumphal honors from them before we depart this place? No? He turned to Quintus, who stood with the instruments of his trade dangling slackly from his gauntlets. A superhuman warrior somehow reduced to the status of a lost child, and the brother Captain Apothecary. Perhaps you should make attempt to recover his gene seed. Yes? If the Emperor is kind, perhaps there is something inside that which can still be saved. I wheeled towards him with a sudden Nova Bright flash of rage. And in that moment, entirely without meaning to, my eyes fixed on the fallen Captain, and I saw. No conventional weapon had felled him. Some esoteric device crafted by lunatics in the nightmare reaches of the warp had pierced him with a terrible searing light, calibrated not to blast and burn, but to alter and mutate. The captain's power armor had splintered and sundered, and the sculpted flesh beneath had erupted in an obscene sorcerer's transformation. Pallid growths had twisted out of his skin, subdividing and multiplying, layering and relayering in a disgusting teeming mass bone had buckled and sprouted into repulsive brittle trees. Flesh had boiled and run into a glistening slurry that fanned out from the shuddering form like great glossy wings. The captain was still alive somehow. The half of his face that had not warped into the oily visage of a smirking gargoyle retained the noble likeness of Gilliman. One intact eye looked at us beseechingly as the deformed throat labored to speak producing only awful, strangled groans. We had tried to show him mercy. Of course we had. Our bolters were all empty, magazines voided into the churning horror. Mutant gristle pulped, and lashings of ichor spat across the earth. But the thing would not die. It would not die. We should have closed and tried to hack it apart with knife and chainsaw, but could not bear to approach it. The shame was too great. The bitterness that knifed at all of us was too great. We had done everything right, 
done everything that honor and our oaths to the chapter had demanded. And we had still been broken, humiliated. We had been ruined for them. The baseline humans of the PDF, what was left of them. Pale boys and sour-faced old men. Bodies riddled with toxins from their filthy environment and weakened by malnutrition. Mortals cowering in the wreckage of purposeless lives. Cowards and weaklings who have been too preoccupied with their own feeble concerns to have noticed the evil metastasizing within their own society. Their apathy. Their weakness. The crooked bodies and slovenly minds that mocked our own martial perfection with their nauseating weaknesses had drawn my chapter down with them into damnation. For this grey, joyless world my chapter has been maimed. For this wretched crew we had fought like furies to be battle kings of ashes. My boots scuffed against something in the dirt. I looked down at the captain's bolter. The gilded filigree still glinting on the barrel, half visible through daubs of pus and blood. I snatched it up, reflexively checking the load. No point to that, Sergeant, grunted Quintus. We can't kill the enemy twice. My hands had stopped shaking. I felt the exact moment, the fulcrum on which my life turned, as it came and went. Something inside me growing brittle then shattering with a single discordant note. Thoughts whirring like thrown blades down new forbidden pathways, piercing into new possibilities. There was a new feeling of coldness too. It was a harsh but bracing cold. I turned slowly towards the humans, these cold new thoughts and impulses humming towards a final decision, shaping the edifice of a new reality. I cocked my helmed head, flared my nostrils, smelt the rancid smell of humanity's failure. I almost heard the faint sound of the warp's mirth as I decided that I would prefer never to smell that failure again. The other survivors of the squad sensed the change and fell into place behind me. The Vox was silent. Somehow, nothing needed to be said. Truly, whatever was to come after, I was closer to my battle brothers than ever before in that moment. Comrades, I had said, we have yet to kill the true enemy once. They sensed what was coming, those wretched Imperial soldiers. There was a sudden spike of animal fear, too stunted and pathetic to be of any use to them at the last. The certainty became diamond hard within me that a world of such fallen creatures was not worth a single Astarte's life. With a growl of cold pleasure, I leveled my captain's bolter and fired. <laughs>